Saturday, April 13, 2024. And um, this is a follow-up to the post this morning. Did you all consider the questions that I had about our medical care system and then watch the video clip I did on the Lazarus syndrome and then with without me asking did you go ahead and watch that 45 minute episode of the Lazarus syndrome if you didn't then I really want you to go back and and look at it um but I decided that <clears throat> I would share with you or walk with you through my process of um, managing my own and my family's medical care because I do not need someone who does not know me or my family to be in charge of our medical care. I want us to be able to work together. And um, I've done this numerous times for various family members, breaking down all the jargon into simple language um, and also considering um what the cause is because my approach to medical care is that we are at war and that um, especially in hospitals medical treatment is designed to um, demobilize people in various ways and so with that in mind I'm always asking myself what weapons are they using to fight against the body's natural healing processes? And that's exactly what they do the opposite. <laughs> so, you know, they approach it all from the opposite direction. So um, I wanted to show you how to how I do this and how I think about it as I'm doing it so that you can begin to um, be more proactive and more involved in what's going on when you are receiving medical care. Um, I want you to keep in mind that all medical providers are not bad providers because I also was a clinical provider and clearly I, my focus was always on the people I served, um, not even the agency I work for and definitely not the insurance companies. So, you know, the important thing is if you find a provider who works with you, who, who um, is not offended when you ask questions, or you say you don't understand um, and and they don't mind looking it up with you or considering things that you have found on your own and can make sense of your own um, ailment, whatever it is, those are usually people you want to stick with and continue to work with. It's the ones who, like every other system, church or corporate America, where you're not allowed to ask any questions. This is what it is. And, you know, this is what you need to do. And, you know, and that's that. And I'm like, no, um, you aren't doing this for free. I'm paying you. I mean, the insurance company is paying you, but I pay the insurance company and I pay a co-payment. So you're going to provide the service that I believe I need. And if you don't want to, that's fine. There are other providers I can go to. And so I do. They get fired. All right. So with that in mind, um, the information that I shared earlier uh, begins with me looking at the actual diagnosis she received and then thinking about what um, that particular type of disease um, would, how that would serve in a um, war type of uh, situation. And we all know in Hampton Roads that especially in Norfolk, mobility is has become a huge medical specialty area here. I mean, they since 2018, they have extensively added on to um, the Lee, Centera Lee Hospital um, with a, a oste uh, osteo wing of the hospital. They have an entire new building dedicated to ortho um so mobility it, it, and they you know they have um they act they converted a storefront nearby to a mobility store where you can buy wheelchairs and you know all that kind of you know the electric wheelchairs the regular wheelchairs all that kind of stuff so you know get keeping people <laughs> locked into this area and being aware that their focus was going to be on slowing people's mobility um, is a thing in Norfolk. And I will link the video I did um, as I began this journey on YouTube so that you can watch that as well. 
Okay, so this is the diagnosis, medial uh, femur tibial osteophyte. So it's like, what the heck are these words and what do they mean? You know, you don't think that you aren't intelligent. You are intelligent. The thing is, you cannot, when you go to medical school, you learn a whole lot of generalities. When it's you or your loved one, you're just focused on learning about the condition of uh, yourself or your loved one. And so you will take more time to figure out what the words mean and all of that sort of thing. So um, I broke each of the three words down because it's, you know, it's, it's big and into parts to first figure out what medial means and it means the center. Um, so something is something center of whatever this is, is probably what it is, is how I, I, would, I was thinking about it. And then I went to, I said femur, and when I typed it in, femur came up. And so I started looking at the femur and how it works, um, you know, how it's supposed to function when it's healthy, that kind of thing. That's what I'm doing here, learning about what the different parts are, because I knew that might come up later. And then what are some of the other um, issues that can come up with that same area of the body, because they're they're all going to be related in some way, especially when you start looking at the drugs and the um, treatments or therapies. Um, <clears throat> here, I, I said that um, the MCL is one of the knee's restraints to excessive opening on the inner side of the knee and is primary to restraining this type of movement. So that's helping me to better understand this middle um joint part of the joint in the body and so what's this is what's wrong with it so let me come back over here and i just broke it down a little bit more to make sure that i understood how what these parts are and how they're supposed to work what the common name would be for it you know i did that to make sure you know the the words are easy to remember and then what is this what is this thing because this is going to be the mobility war part of it so um it in the most simple terms it's bone spurs but that's not enough for me to be able to advocate it and uh, with her medical team nor to explain to her what it what the problem is and why the treatment they're using is not working correctly so, but I went ahead and defined it anyway and tried to pay attention to how the knee works, you know, what kind of pain, you know, she has in her knee and then people I've known with knee pain have had so that I could kind of visualize how that works. I looked at my own knee and my own kneecap just to, you know, sort of help me visualize what all of this looks like on the inside. Um, and then uh, I read about uh, Bouchard nodes is the name that they gave it and these nodes um, are bony outgrowth so um, calcified or calcific spurs and so I, I continue here um, thinking about all the symptoms and what would cause uh, this arthritis and this pain and wondering about why the body would be reacting this way. I saw some, I looked at some pictures of cal calcific spurs. I also looked at um, photographs of other kinds of um, mechanical parts of the joints. And so then, and then I just tried to think to myself, you know, a healthy body would not produce spurs, you know, that I can't, I could not think of any rational reason why the body would produce those but the production of um, calcified pieces is natural you know if you had a, a, um, a broken leg or a bone injury then those cells would have to convert into um, you know the same material that the bones are made of so you know it could little pieces of bone gr being grown by the body's immune system is natural, but not in the way that it has caused this medial femoral tibial osteophyte. So um, that that's kind of led all the rest of it. So the first thing I thought about is inflammation because that is uh, a side effect that she's had. And what I know about the body and natural response to injury 
Inflammation and pain are always the immune system signaling the rest of the body that repairs are needed and are in progress. And this is to force you to rest um, and to restrict your use of whatever part that is if necessary. So inflammation, if you think about what, what function inflammation would serve, it's like putting a cushion around an injury or around an injured area so that the healing can occur. So you want inflammation, but sometimes um, with inflammation, depending on where the injury is, it may prevent you from moving something because if it's in a joint um, or something like that, then the swelling is going to, you know, inevitably affect your range of motion. So you're not going to be able to move it the way you're supposed to. And because it is inflamed and there's an injury there, you'll feel pain. And whenever you feel pain, you usually stop doing, you know, got my heater, y'all. Sorry about that. Um, but whenever you feel pain, you're going to stop whatever it is you're doing because nobody likes to feel pain, which serves a purpose. It's supposed to make you sit down and as it, the healing is completed, you will feel less pain, there will be less inflammation and so on and so forth. But what we tend to do is to take medications and steroids and things like that so that we can still go to work. We don't want to listen to our bodies and we want to just keep living our lives and ignore our body trying to send us signals that you need to sit down or lay down or at least not use this part temporarily so that I can completely make the repair or make the repair as best I can in the environmental conditions that you are enduring. So um, here simply I said decreased inflammation allows increased mobility pain regulates the level of use until repairs are complete or is complete and then I re as a reminder I note that each individual cell has the capacity to become any part of the body but will specify depending upon the needs of the individual at any given time these cells are stored in bone marrow and released and replaced where whenever necessary throughout the body so that brought me to this word osteo, which is part of the other diagnosis, osteoarthritis, osteophyte, which means bone, and how this whole system of treatment came about. It didn't, osteo, osteo, osteopathy did not start until, eight, until the 1890s. This study of the systems of the bone, the musculoskeletal system, um, and how they heal, all of that was, uh, launched in 1890 okay and they note that the pain is the chief reason patients seek musculoskeletal treatment and when you think about osteo and then all of the other osteo stuff that we looked at pain is the weapon <laughs> that's the weapon that, that is what will control mobility and use of any part of a person's body so I then went back and looked at this calcification idea, and then I found calcif calcif calcific tendinitis. Um, and the cause is, this is the best way to look at it, is it's a mineral imbalance. Now, how many different ways can you imagine, just off the top of your head, that minerals can be um, manipulated within the body? What our mineral intake is. Specifically here, um, calcific, calcific tendinitis is caused by excessive vitamin D and deficient vitamin K. So th these are two natural vitamins. And an excess of this vitamin and a deficiency in this vitamin are enough to create these bony outgrowths. Does that make sense? Do y'all understand where, where I am so far? All right, so then I came over to look at the steroid they gave her as part of her treatment and what it is, how it's used, not just in her treatment, but in general, because they use it for multiple diagnoses. So I looked at all of that. Um, what was important to me was that it is, temp it, they note that it is just temporary relief. It's to tide the patient over an acute episode while they have in a, some other kind of therapy. Now she wasn't advised to do any other kind of therapy. She was just given a shot. But it says that the shot is to tie the patient over as part of adjunctive therapy. So it could be physical therapy or there's some other hormone therapies, things like that that they could use, but they didn't make that recommendation. So I'm already on to something. 
All right, and so then I started to look at um, what this is. Because anytime a word comes up, I was like, I don't know what that is. I have to look it up. Um, I looked up this uh, synov uh, synovitis and found out about this these fluid sacs, which is true for our whole body. There are always um, sacs or linings to hold moisture or water um, or fluid with around organs. Um, so there's a smooth flow in the body in the body system. So there are these uh, little these sacs that are in the knee, which have fluid in them. That sometimes they will inject the steroids into. So I was like, okay, that's interesting. So, you know, is the flu does she have a sack? Is the sack in her knee um, torn? And so there's no fluid there. And so it's, you know, it's dry in that joint area. And that's why when she is moving, it causes pain. I don't know. But these are the way, this is how I start to think about it so that I can, you know, tell her, well, watch for this or look, look at this or see if this happens or let's try this. Um, so I can get ideas that way and then of course if we talk to the doctor and I present all of this information Then I can say what you know, what kind of therapy do you think would be beneficial? Um, or does she need to you know, just rest and you know, and you're gonna wait and see and then what is it that we are waiting to see? All right, um, and then lastly um, This is as far as I've gotten so far because I'm getting tired, but I did want to be able to share this with you um they told her that a side effect of the injection was a steroid flare. So I wanted to understand that because that means that the body is gonna fight against whatever they're giving her for some reason. And I'm like, okay, so why would the body fight against it um, if it's to help with pain? Well, the long and more complex answer is the medical system is not designed to heal people it is designed to keep people functional for the use um that they serve in society and that's it for 70 years or 75 years and you know we'll just do do what we can with it with the person um as long as they are are mobile and uh still have their mental capacity and so on and so forth but anyway um this also answers a question that I had on a stupid poll, which is what is in the steroids? Because usually when people take steroids, it gives the healing system a boost, which is why they only let you take it for, if you're taking it orally, for example, they only let you take it for, you know, like a couple of weeks in conjunction with some other kind of medication so that you, you're able to heal more quickly. Um, it's also why they get, why sports medicine give these to athletes because, you know, they want to keep them in, you know, I, I hate to make the comparison, but like with race horses, they want to keep them in optimal condition to play. So, you know, they'll use these things for them. And the reality is, is that these steroids are a synthetic version of a hormone that's naturally produced in the body by the adrenaline glands so you know your adrenaline glands are what help you run um you know help help you to respond really quickly in a dangerous situation um so anyway uh if we have to have a shot of a synthetic version of this what do you think that means because this the adrenal glands release hormones that give you more energy and um, the capacity to, you know, carry a heavy weight tempor more uh, temporarily or to run faster or to react faster. Um, so why, why is there a deficiency of this in the body? That's a question. All right. But this, this particular sentence right here, I think is um, important because this is the pattern right here in every way. It reduces the interaction between, keep them separated, don't let them talk to each other, including the hormones <laughs> in the body. It reduces the interaction between white blood cells and the immune response, which in turn reduces the inflammation. So essentially the steroid, the way that they use it is designed to counter um, the body's natural response to a... Um, irritant or a foreign substance being 
incorporated into it and so the body starts swelling that area it's like i need to make a repair here and they give the injection to prevent that from happening so you can continue to use it um well not well not the steroid itself but the steroid is designed to help with the pain but the inflammation um comes from the steroid itself and if the or the the injection it may not be the actual medication but the injection in the process of injecting it the body respond can respond by um inflaming that area at the injection site and it's because you you know the medical system is designed to counter how the body defends itself against the contaminants that it is exposed to so um, I hope that this was helpful and that you all learned something from me sharing this process with you. Um, it really does help me, you know, in doing this in advance to have um, productive, healthy conversations with the medical team when necessary and to help people to work together with the medical team um, and being able to resolve whatever the issue is that brought them in the first place. And the same is true for how I care for myself, my husband, and my children, you know, as advocates for them. And, you know, we've avoided a lot of unnecessary treatments, some unnecessary surgeries. I have an entire big notebook just dedicated to Deja and all those things that have been done to her and all of her symptoms just for Deja, a whole entire book that's double the size in length and height and pages. So anyway, um, use this with discretion, but do not allow anyone else to manage your health and your health care. You be in charge of your health and health care and that of your children um, and, and find medical professionals who are willing to work with you and are not intimidated or offended by your desire to want to learn more about your own body.